Hey, what's up guys, welcome back. As you might have guessed from the title of this video, we found a transmission. If you watched our last video, you might know that we are gonna be VQ swapping the yellow dots in. Yeah, I know, right, like I need another VQ, but you know, whatever, they're, they're pretty badass engines if you're into trumpets. But to get that done, we were gonna need a manual transmission. So we're gonna need a transmission out of a 350Z or G35. Um, the CD009 is the ideal transmission to get. It has triple cone synchros on first, second, and third gear. The previous models um, had triple, triple cone synchros on first and maybe second, uh, but not third. And obviously, the more cones, the better the transmission, apparently. Um, I don't know a whole lot of tra about transmissions, but I've taken a couple apart before. The one in the Altima, for example, I've taken it apart and reassembled like three times, just because that's how many tries it took me to get it right. Um, I've taken apart a CD09 once before, but that was just, you know, getting the bell housing off and looking at the gears and stuff. Um, I've been kind of dreading looking for one just because the prices are kind of going through the roof and they're getting a little scarce. But luckily I only spent like two days looking for one and I happened to find one. The ad kept popping up and it was like a three or four month old ad, so I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I just figured that's nah, already sold. The dude's asking 200 bucks. Uh, he said third gear is a little sus, but it should be rebuildable. Um, but I figured, eh, might as well just message him, and just see what's up. And he didn't answer, so I just kept looking. And I actually found one. I found two, one for like $800 and another one for $1,200. So yeah, that, that was just kind of out of the question. But luckily the dude answered after like a week and he's like, yeah, it's available. So I was like, heck yeah, can I go take a look at it today? So we took a drive like an hour from here and went to go meet the guy and he's a super cool dude. Uh, he actually ended up giving us an LSD differential out of the same car. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the gearing should match up well between the two. Uh, third gear definitely was, a, a little suspicious. Um, it goes into all the gears, but when you put it into third, it definitely feels weird and it gets stuck on the way out sometimes. So there's definitely something wrong. At the very least, I'm guessing we're gonna have to replace the synchro on third. Well, if we have a part, we're gonna just replace whatever needs to be replaced. Um, I, I know third gear has been known to, to shear off in some cases, so I'm Kind of hoping that's not the case, but uh, we don't know until we get in there. Hopefully there's not just a ton of shrapnel in there. But uh, let's get started and see what's up. All right, so we got our transmission on the bench now. And before we get started, some of the stuff that I know you're gonna need is, first of all, a magnet. This one's probably not gonna work. One of the ones with the, the small magnet on the end would probably be better. But this is all I got, so we're gonna have to give that a shot. Uh, second up is a set of punches. Transmissions usually have a bunch of like roll pins holding everything together. So you're gonna need, you know, a set of punches to get those off. You're also gonna need a 10, 12, 14, 21, and 27 millimeter sockets. And Maybe an impact if you got one, but not really necessary. So let's get started. I've already removed uh, some of the external stuff. Um, the breather tube, uh, this bracket that holds literally a pack of weights to the back of the transmission. This is a solid like, I don't know, eight, five, eight pounds or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's not going back on. Um, first thing to come off is this top plate here. You just want to be careful because there is a spring and a check ball behind here. So it's not so much of an ish issue with the transmission like this, but if you're working on it like standing up, yeah, definitely watch out for that. Okay. 
can see there's that spring. Spring right there. Make sure to keep track of your parts because there's a lot of like little junk in here, like little springs, check balls and stuff like that. Just try not to lose anything. So now let's see if this magnet is gonna work. It obviously doesn't fit in there. Ideally, like I said, you want the smaller extendable magnet pen thingy. That would fit right in there and you could get the check ball out. Yeah, that's probably not gonna work. Let's see if we can get this spring out of here. Let's see if taking some tension off it helps. All right, so we can't really get it out from the top here. So we're gonna try to just push it down and see if we can get it out through the bottom. The area under the shifter mechanism here it is solid. Um, and there's like a ridge toward the, the right here. So I'm kind of hoping that if we push the ball all the way down, it'll go through the channel where the the spring that holds the, the shifter centered was. And hopefully it'll stay down there. I don't see anywhere else that it could possibly go. So it should be fine unless it like bounces all over the place and falls in here. And that, that's gonna be a problem. But like I said, get one of the smaller magnets because then you could just like drop right in here and get it out. But uh, hopefully this works. Yeah, see, so that should work for me. And yeah, just like that. So that is what you're looking for. There's a whole bunch of little stuff like this. So yeah, just keep track of everything. Next up, we're gonna take the second spring mechanism out. And these are pieces that hold the shifter centered. And also the, the springs that go in here are two different lengths. So keep that in mind, the shorter one. You can kind of tell um, the space is shorter on this side than this side. So just keep that in mind. Next up, I think we're gonna take this, this guy off. This is just a little check ball that holds the shifter in place too, like from first to second or third to fourth. So yeah, there's no, now there's nothing really holding the shifter in place, just kind of flopping around. Next up, oh, this neutral sensor is already pretty loose. This one's already broken also. Let's see if we can get this piece out of here. Anytime you see something like loose in there, you always want to try and take it out because you don't want it to fall out when you're doing something else and then you don't know where it went. All right, so it looks like everything's out of the way here. Next up is gonna be the roll pin on the shifter linkage itself. Another thing you're gonna need if you're gonna use punches is a hammer. Let's be right back. Okay. And these roll pins, they're usually doubled up. So you need to take the, the center one out first. Didn't quite make it all the way out. 
And that's probably good enough to get the second one. And now our punch is stuck in there. So these are your roll pins. Like I said, there's gonna be a small one and then a larger one. Um, our punches weren't quite long enough to get the first one completely out of the way, but we we're able to get the second one out anyway in one piece. So you use a smaller punch to get the first punch out. So now this should be separated. Yeah. So as you can see now, our shifter's separated from the linkage inside. I think we're gonna take off the whole shifter mechanism now. And that's gonna be a 12 millimeter nut. And there's two on the sides and two on top. Yep, just like that. All right, next up, there's a bunch of little 10 millimeter bolts with little brackets attached to them on the outside. Uh, they're probably used to hold like the wiring harness or something. Uh, we don't probably need those, so I'm just going to remove those. Probably going in the junk pile. Right, and with that, it looks like we're probably good to start taking off the the bolts that hold the housing together, which are 12 millimeter bolts. There's one actually inside the the shifter cover here. These all seem to be the same size, so don't have to worry about those too much. I think we're all clear to take the rear housing off. Could be wrong. You want to do this with the soft mallet, which I don't think I have. Nope. Just going to give this a tap with the regular hammer. bad. So there's a gear in here that's it's just loose. So you want to watch out for that. I think that's about it. There's some trash in here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna set this down like this so that gear doesn't fall out. So far the, the internals seem a little dirty. I don't see any big chunks of anything though, so that's a good sign. Okay, so with that off, we can turn our attention to the front of the case. And there's a bunch of, um, it looks like more 12 millimeter bolts holding the, the front cover on. And once we have that off, I believe the rest of the case can be separated. Removing the front cover is just a bunch of 12 millimeter bolts. All right, so 10 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter nuts hold the front cover on. 
Interesting thing to note is that the lower four bolts have what looks like um, thread sealer on them. So all the, the ones that go toward the bottom of the case have that, that sealer on them. And the ones that don't look like that. So now, yep. Okay, so that's the front cover. So like I said, these, so it, it goes in there like this and these lower four bolts here, those are the ones that had thread sealer on them. It doesn't look like Loctite. So maybe, maybe don't put Loctite on them when you're putting it back together. But yeah, it's definitely some kind of sealer because you can see that the bolts um, aren't discolored on the outside uh, where the sealer is. Now there's a 10 millimeter nut in there that you need to remove. So one 10 millimeter nut. And it looks like, oh my God, it's a snap ring in there. Holding it together. Um, yep, just a snap ring. These are always a pain in the ass. You get a flathead screwdriver. All right, I gotta bring you guys in a little closer for this one. Um, so I got a flathead screwdriver. And I have some snap ring pliers, but it's not that kind of snap ring. So I'm just trying to hold, hold it apart with this. Man. Like I said, these are always just a pain in the ass. There we go. There actually doesn't seem to be one on the, the lower bearing. So I think we're good to go. Like I said, there's just that 10 millimeter nut that went there at the very bottom. Yeah, sorry if you're wearing headphones. Ow, my freaking ears! <gasps> you're really not supposed to use a metal hammer for this but i'm just not hitting it way too hard just kind of tapping it it's already split open so we're gonna use our flathead And that's our case off. This bearing is in here loose, so I'm gonna watch out for that. Maybe that's the one that went there. I mounted the gear set in the vise with some cardboard. That's how the service manual says you're supposed to service it. And now we can see all the gears. And at first glance, they look pretty good. First thing to note is there's no giant chunks missing out of anything. I 
And the synchros themselves don't look terrible. Um, maybe they do. It's a little bit of wear. Um, but our 3-4, I believe, is this one down here. Yeah, I think that one's pretty worn out. As you can see, there's no gap at all left in that one. I was hoping it might be just like a shift fork that was bent or something, but it looks all right. This is our shifter lever here. So I'm gonna guess this is three and four. And this will be first and second, and then fifth and sixth, over here. All right, day two with this piece of junk. I went out and got a magnet to help with all the little check balls and springs and stuff. The one I had was it's just too big. It wasn't gonna be really helpful to get all the small pieces out of here. So I got this from O'Reilly's for like six bucks. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna try to remove all the shift rods and forks. To do that, we need to remove these, um, I think they're 14 millimeter plugs. Each plug has a spring behind it and a check ball. Be real careful uh, depending on how you're working on it. Ideally, you should have it like this, so stuff doesn't just go falling out everywhere. Um, but like this side one could potentially fall out, so just be careful and keep track of your stuff. Okay. So first plug on the side, use our little magnet to get the spring out. And there should be, yep, check ball in there. I like to keep a magnet laying around and just put all the little check balls and stuff on, on that. Okay, second one, another spring. Looks like it's the same size as the first one. Another check ball. And it was a little stuck. A lot of thread sealer in that one. And this spring has got some paint on it. So we'll make note that that's the second one from the front there. And that thread sealer is really not helping. <laughs> okay, and be careful not to dislodge your reverse synchro. <laughs> All the thread sealer junk on there. <laughs> that one's also got a little bit of paint on it. All right, so four springs and four check balls. There's also the one that went on the side here. It looks like there's a, a line that goes all the way through all four of these uh, shift rods. I'm willing to bet there's probably more check balls in between the rods. This whole mechanism is what's used to keep you from being in two gears at the same time. So I already removed this uh, roll pin on the shift selector. So this one just slides out. And then the whole shift rod comes out. And 
Another issue that I've noticed is third gear is supposedly the broken one, but yet if I put it in, in third, that's the only one that works. If I put it in, well, for example, that's fourth, it just kind of locks up. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, I can't move these other two forks right now, but they would do the same thing as that fourth gear did. And also, when in neutral, the input and output shafts should be independent of each other, and they don't seem to be. So I'm wondering if there's something else wrong here that I'm not seeing. Because if I hold the output shaft and spin the input shaft, they're, I mean, they're stuck together. But yet, the input shaft seems to move freely on the main shaft, so. And if I lift up the, the main shaft, you can see that the fifth and, or first and second gear aren't stuck to the main shaft or anything. Sixth also seems fine. Fifth, fifth does, does seem to be stuck on the, the input shaft, but I believe that's just because fifth gear is one to one um, as far as the ratio. So I think that's why that one doesn't move, but could be wrong. And also reverse spins freely without the the idler gear on it anyway. So yeah. All right, so now we gotta try and remove all the, the shift rods and forks. And I'm gonna start with reverse since we already kinda dislodged that one. And sure enough, yeah, there's more check balls in there, so be careful. And there's also a little, um, kind of like a check ball, but more like a tic-tac inside the shift rod there. So don't lose that. <laughs> and then we can get these check balls out of here. Oh, there's two. Let's see if all right, so that one seems to be all clear. All right, so we have these two shift forks and the one at the bottom here. And this thing, this thing's already loose, but I don't think it's gonna come out without taking the roll pin out of it. So let's start knocking those out. So this should slide out now. Kind of. And there goes a check ball. Okay, two in there too. That was a close one. They keep rolling out because the transmission's kind of tilted down a little bit. So there's two in between the outer two shift forks and two in between these other two. That's probably all there is besides these longer ones in the middle there. But I don't think those have to come out. Now, I can move on to these shift forks. Two more roll pins. Now this should be loose. This should be another one. 
Yeah, this one also has one of those uh, retainers in it, which just fell out. So, yeah. Now this one, I guess. This one should be all free. Or not. There's a pivot here with some 12, 12 millimeter bolts holding it on. Looks like that's keeping it from coming out. Probably gonna need a swivel. Or not. Okay, so just a short 12 millimeter socket and wrench or ratchet. That barely fits in there. Just gonna use it to loosen them because I don't think I'll be able to get the ratchet out if I. Try to take them out all the way. Okay. So that's out. Now this should come out. Unless there's a check ball in here. No. Okay, we're good. So that's shift fork for fifth and sixth. Now let's do third and fourth. Oh, that one did not come out all the way. Uh, good enough though. Now it comes out. And it looks like this fork can't come out without the windage tray and uh, with the windage tray installed. Ten mil there. And ten mil there. Okay. Windage tray. Um, I thought there'd be magnets in here somewhere, but I don't see anything. Those look pretty dirty though. Let's toss our 10 mils back in there. And might as well toss the nut that goes on the front side of it. And now our fork, the last fork can come out. All right, and that's just about everything. Gonna try and take out these uh, little forbidden hot dogs here. Oh, it's just one actually. Forbidden hot dog. So that's the one that goes in the middle. And then there's a shift fork, and then two check balls, and then or a shift rod, two check balls, shift rod, and then same on the other side. Two check balls, shift rod. Okay, so now let's just make sure. This thing's so nice. It just happens to be like the exact diameter of the the bore that all this stuff goes through. So let's just put it through and make sure there's nothing else that might be able to fall out in there. Nope, looks like we're all good. Nothing on top. Okay, so now we're ready to start pulling the gears apart. You have to take off these rear ones first. This is the reverse gear and synchro and the counter shaft gear. Now before you can put the, the gear puller on it, there's C-clips on both of these. So you gotta take those off first. Now we can get our puller in place to 
start trying to take the gears off. Okay, so we got our two jaw puller on here. Uh, this isn't exactly how it's supposed to be used, but I thought that these extensions would uh, allow you to extend these L jaws that it comes with, and they don't, which I think is kind of dumb. So I got the, the bearing separator part of it, which happens to be the same thread. And I threaded both of these into this. So there's not a whole lot, of, whole lot of thread engagement on each one, but hopefully there's not too much tension on this. So let's see if this works. And it spins. Uh, so we could lock this in like two gears at the same time to keep it from spinning. And let's give it a shot. And it's kind of bending already. Okay, so I decided to go get some threaded couplings so I can do this properly. And I also heated up the gear a little bit and it looks like that's working. We got a little bit more to go. All right. That's still kind of warm. I'll let that cool down a second. Here we have the synchro hub, your actual synchro ring or bulk ring or whatever you want to call it. And your actual reverse gear. And this one has like a sleeve of needle bearings in it. So careful with that. Now we can remove this bearing retainer. And apparently this is how, or at least it's one way of you can tell if you have an actual CD009 is the previous versions like 008 and and before that have a two piece bearing retainer, whereas the CD09 and forward have a single piece bearing retainer. And to get this one off, you're gonna need a T40. Yeah, T40 Torx bit. So that's that piece. And now, we get to try and remove this bottom gear. Let's see if we can use this one. Hopefully this one isn't as much of a pain in the ass as the top one. Okay. Okay. Apparently you can use the bearing separator as part of the puller, which is kind of neat. Okay, this one's moving a lot easier. I say this screw isn't doing too well already. Got it from Amazon, what do you expect? There we are. So yeah, there's the counter shaft gear. All right, so now we got a snap ring holding the main shaft in place. And it doesn't look like there's one on the counter shaft. So. This whole thing might come apart just from that snap ring. Lower bearing actually looks like it gets in the way. So looks like you need to start from the top and then turn it as soon as you clear that bottom part. Okay. 
There we go. So maybe this comes out now. Okay, so it does look like everything is pretty much loose now. Um, also, there's like a washer on the counter shaft. It looks like that's what went up against the gear on the end of the counter shaft. So that's interesting now the main shaft is definitely in two pieces and the input shaft is a separate piece altogether so don't try to pick it up by by this part because that comes off so Well, that was easier to get out than put back in. The main thing here is the counter shaft, because this is where most of our problems lie. Mainly our third gear, our third gear, which or our third gear is stuck to the counter shaft. So that's the main problem here. So you can see here, this is fourth and this is third, which is stuck there. All right, so I got the puller set up on the counter shaft to try and get third and fourth off. Apparently you're supposed to take this whole thing off in one go. I don't think this thing's gonna survive this, especially being that this one's like stuck to the shaft itself. The um, reverse gear had needle bearings all on the inside. So if that's the same case with these other gears, I'm willing to bet that the needle bearings on third are all crushed together and just seized up. So I can't see this going smoothly. Well, that didn't go smoothly. We straight pulled the end off this brand new bearing puller that I bought. It's supposedly rated for six tons of force and looks like we're gonna need to break out the big guns. Will we ever put this transmission back together? Will John let us borrow his press? Is cereal soup? Let's find out on the next episode of Garage 23. できなかった人はちゃんと復習するようにね。<笑>